pardon our transgressions, holy one visited you our authorities for thy name's sake. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of age. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Come, let us worship God, our King. Come, let us worship and fall down before Christ, our King and our God. Come, let us worship and fall down before Christ himself, our King and our God. Hear a just cause, O Lord, attend to my cry. Give ear to my prayer from lips free of deceit. From thee let my vindication come. Let my eyes see the right. If thou tryest my heart, if thou visitest me by night, if thou testest me, thou wilt find my weakness in me. My mouth is not transgressed. With regards to the works of men by the words of thy lips, I have upbraided the ways of the violent. My steps have held fast to thy paths. My feet have not slipped. I call upon thee, for thou wilt answer me, O God. Incline thy ear to me. Hear my words. Wondrously show thy steadfast love. O oh, Savior of those who seek refuge from their adversaries at thy right hand, keep me as the apple of thine eye, hide me under the shadow of thy wings, from the wicked who disclose me, from my deadly enemies who surround me. They close their hearts to pity, with their mouths they speak arrogantly, they track me down, now they surround me, they set their eyes to cast me to the ground. They are like a lion eager to tear, as a young lion lurking in ambush. Arise, O Lord, confront them, overthrow them, deliver my life from the waste by thy sword, from men by thy hand, O Lord, from men whose portion in life is of the world. May their belly be filled with what thou hast stored up for them. May their children have more than enough. May they leave something over to their babe. As for me, I shall behold thy face in righteousness. When I awake, I shall be satisfied with beholding thy form. To thee, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in thee I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exalt over me. Yea, let none that wait for thee be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. For thee I wait all the day long. Be mindful of thy mercy, O Lord, and of thy steadfast love. For they have been from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. According to thy steadfast love, remember me for thy goodness, sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimony. For thy name, O Lord, pardon my guilt for his grace. Who is the man who gives the Lord? Him will he instruct in the way that he should choose. He himself shall abide in prosperity, and his children shall possess the land. The friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him, and he makes known to them his covenant. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. Turn out to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. Relieve the troubles of my life, and bring me out of my distresses. Consider my affliction and my trouble, 
Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Thou art the beginning of salvation for all of us on earth, Virgin Mother of God. For the great archangel Gabriel, God's minister, was sent from heaven to stand before thee, to bring thee joy. Therefore we all cry to thee, rejoice, O unwedded bride. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Cause for the Camilla Ross, 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 for the Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Thou who at every season and every hour in heaven and on earth art worshipped and glorified, O Christ our God, who are long suffering, merciful and compassionate, who lovest the just and shows mercy upon the sinner, who call us all to salvation through the promises of blessings to come. O Lord, in this hour receive our supplications and direct our lives according to thy commandments. Sanctify our souls, hallow our bodies, correct our thoughts, cleanse our minds, deliver us from all tribulations and distress. Compass us about with thy holy angels, that guided and guarded by them, may attain to the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of thy unapproachable glory. For thou art blessed unto ages of ages. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. More honorable than the cherubim, more glorious beyond the heaven to serve them. Without a fulfillment, thou gavest birth to God the Word. Through the Holy Ghost, we magnify thee. In the name of the Lord, give the blessing, Father. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. O God, the Master, Father Almighty, O Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, and now the Holy Spirit, one Godhead, one power, have mercy upon me, a sinner, and according to thy divine judgment, save me, thine unworthy servant. For blessed art thou unto the ages of ages. Amen. Thank you. 
fear and trembling have come upon me, and horror overwhelms me. And I say, I wish that I had wings like a dove, and I would fly away, and I would rest. Yes, I would wander far away. I would lodge in the wilderness, and I would make haste to find a shelter for the raging of the tempest. Destroy their plans, O Lord. Confuse their tongues. For I see violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go around on its walls, and mischief and trouble are within it, and ruin is in the midst. Oppression and fraud do not depart from its marketplace. It is not the enemy who taunts me. I could bear it. But it is an adversary who deals insolent with me. I could hide from him. But it is you, my equal, my companion, my familiar friend. We used to hold sweet converse together within God's house. We worshiped in fellowship. Let death come upon them and go down to school alive. Let them go away in terror into their grave. But I call on God, the God who will save me. Evening and morning I will utter my complaint and moan, and he will hear my voice. He will deliver me, and he will deliver my soul in safety and in battle. They wage many raids against me. God will give ear and humble them. He has enthroned from all because they keep no law. They do not fear God. My companion stretched out his hands against his friends. He violated his covenant. His speech was smoother than butter, yet war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet they were drawn swords. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never permit righteous to be moved, but thou, O God, will cast them down to the lowest pit. Men of blood and treachery shall live half their days, but I trust in thee. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High, who abides in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his wings, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not feel the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 on your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge for your eyes, habitation, no evil shall be for you. No scourge shall come near your death. He will give his angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways. And on his hand they will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion, and the serpent, he will trample on the foot. Because he cleaves to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. If he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him. I will honor him. If all right, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. So he will be far into the sky and the Holy Spirit. Now and ever until the ages of ages. Hallelujah, 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 glory to thee, O God. Hallelujah, 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 glory to thee, O God. Hallelujah, 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 glory to thee, O God. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Let's rejoice in the Lord. The second one. The stone which had been sealed by the Jews who had sold him to the body, they must be a body. That this way is on the third day of the table. Granting life to the world, the powers of heaven therefore cried out, O giver of life, glory to thy resurrection. O Christ, glory to thy kingdom, glory to thy dispensation, O thou who loves mankind. We venerate thy most pure image, O good one, and we seek and ask forgiveness of our transgressions, O Christ our God, of thy own will that was pleased to accept the from the flesh and deliver thy creatures from bondage to the enemy. Therefore, with thankfulness we cry out loud to thee, thou hast filled all the joy of the Savior by the Savior coming to save us.
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. Lord of hope, Lord of all creation, have mercy on us and save us. Our Lord Jesus Christ, for the salvation of the King and the Holy Spirit, and the Lord of the Lord of the Lord of the Lord, and therefore triumph over princes, dominions, darkness, Thank you. 
Heavenly King, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, who art everywhere present, and fillest all things, treasury of blessings, and giver of life, come and abide in us. Cleanse us from every impurity, and save our souls, O good one. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill among men. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill among men. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall declare thy praise. Blessed is our God, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. May the Lord direct your steps. May the Lord God remember you in his kingdom, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Bless, Master. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the holy churches of God, and for the union of all that is
save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. The great and the holy one of the Lord, most blessed and glorious, lady, fair, glorious, and ever virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other, and all our life comes to Christ our God. To Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit.
of glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever. Through faith did not receive the promise. 
Christ, God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which is so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Do you believe? You will see greater things than these. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the Sunday of Orthodoxy, or the triumph of Orthodoxy. And I'd like to ask the Sunday school students, along with the teachers, to um, gather in the back of the church right now um, to distribute the icons, because at the conclusion of the homily, uh, according to our custom here, we will have a procession with the holy icons. And also ask the servers to get themselves ready and over here so we can begin the procession uh, right away um, and not have too many pauses in between. You know I like to run a tight ship. <laughs> but dear brothers and sisters, as we celebrate this day of the triumph of orthodoxy, we have to remember that that triumph is the triumph of the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that we enter into that triumph, and we, as, a, as an emblem of that triumph, have the image of Jesus Christ, God made flesh for our salvation, and the fruit of that reality of the Incarnation in the Holy Icons. The Seventh Ecumenical Council, which gathered in the year 787, wow, we got a lot of kids, this is awesome, that, that gathered in 787, confirmed that icons were proper for us to have in our churches for our edification and for our veneration because the honor shown to the icon was transmitted to the prototype. It was transmitted to Jesus Christ and his saints. But even after the church accepted that in the 8th century, 787, at the Seventh Ecumenical Council, for over a hundred years, that truth was, was, uh, was pushed back against. And there was a period of time of iconoclasm, which literally means those who smashed the icons, they took the images of, of Jesus Christ, the Most Holy Mother of God, and the saints, and they tried to destroy them. And not only tried to destroy them, they tried to destroy those who confirmed the truth of the Incarnation through the Holy Icons. And there was horrible things that happened historically there was imprisonments, people were killed, and they were maimed for the sake of the holy icons. Not for the sake of the wood and the paint, but for the sake of the teaching that Jesus Christ became incarnate for our salvation. The invisible God was made visible in Jesus Christ. And so it wasn't until the year 843 that ultimately the icons were restored. On that first Sunday of Lent, in the year 843, the people gathered together in the church and held up the icons and walked with them in procession. And so it's been the custom in the Orthodox Church since the year 843 to have an icon procession. As we confirm the truth that is revealed to us through the holy icons, that the invisible God was made visible. And that we too, dear brothers and sisters, are image bearers of God. Each and every one of us ultimately are icons of Christ. And so as we honor the icon of Christ that is depicted not only on these icons but around our entire church, it was so appropriate that we heard from Hebrews 11 being surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us also lay aside the sin that so easily ensnares us. Looking unto Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. Dear brothers and sisters, this truth, this truth is what we're also engaging in during this Lenten season, where we're setting aside our own understanding, our own wants, our own desires, and submitting them to Jesus Christ. This entire season of Lent is all about that. This past week, we gathered in this church every night. This past week, we had a service in our holy church. And we sang penitential hymns of St. Andrew of Crete. And if you want to learn more about them, by the way, I'm giving a talk on Tuesday night for adult education um, on Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. We gathered every evening in the church to sort of soften our hearts to this truth so that we can be image bearers of Jesus Christ in the world, which so desperately needs, which so desperately needs Christians living with integrity, living with integrity in the world. 
So dear brothers and sisters, may we, as we hold these icons and participate in this procession, not only honor the images that are depicted for us on these pieces of wood with this beautiful paint and the, the truth that they express, but let's also enter into that triumph of orthodoxy, which is ours if we would only submit ourselves to it. So dear brothers and sisters, let's get ready, ready for the procession. The, um, the children, please come forward, and the teachers, the servers should already be ready. Please come out, and the choir will sing, and everyone else, please stand. At the conclusion of the procession, we have the synodicon, or the proclamation of orthodoxy, that we'll offer together. Thus we declare, thus we assert, 
Thus we preach Christ our true God and honor his saints in words, in writings, in thoughts, in sacrifices, in churches, in holy icons. On the one hand, worshiping and reverencing Christ as God and Lord, and on the other hand, honoring as true servants of the same Lord of all, and accordingly offering them veneration. This is the faith of the apostles. This is the faith of the fathers. This is the faith of the Orthodox. This is the faith which has established the universe. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory be Sisters, I forgot to remind everyone that today we're celebrating the liturgy of St. Basil the Great, and so um, that will begin on, I think, on page 117 in your service books. Let us all stay with all our souls, all our minds, let us stay. Patriarchs, for the blessed and ever memorable founders of this holy house, for all of our fathers and brethren, the Orthodox departed this life before us, especially for the newly departed Archpriest Anthony, Kim, the Patriarch Neophyte, Andrew, Virginia, Larry, Catherine, Anne, Faniel, and Joseph, and the departed servants of God, June, Joseph, Martha, George, Paul, and Gabriella. Beverly, Paul, Ron, Jeffrey, Andrew, Maria, Marilyn, Jean, John, and Olga, who here and in all the world lie asleep in the Lord. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Again, we pray for mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, visitation, for the servants of God, the faithful of our parish, and for all Orthodox Christians of true worship who live and sojourn in this community, especially for the ailing servant of God, Francis, for the faithful of our community absent from this divine liturgy, for a reason worthy of God's blessing, for our college students today, Adam, Adriel, Olivia, Grace, Evelyn, Jacob, Sean, Sophia, the reader Vladimir, Feniel, Philemon, Matthew, Zachary, Otilia, Molly, Rachel, John, Malak, Sam, Sophia, Jessica, Cassandra, Ashley, David, Dave, Peter, and Hussam. For the soldiers, Alexander, Valeri, Conrad, Sean, Benjamin, the reader, Vladimir, Abel, Jacob, Gabriel, Matthew, David, Michael, Peter, Sean, Ian, Zachary, Josiah, and Evgeny, Owen. For the handmaidens of God, Karen, Luam, Catherine, Monica, Chikri, Brittany, and the children to be born of them. For Matushka, Tatiana, Elva, and the children born of them. For the newly baptized and illumined child of God, Cleo. 
for our homebound Nicholas and Millicent, for those suffering from natural disasters, all victims of sickness, terror, war, violence, racism, injustice, and civil strife, for Metropolitan Paul and Archbishop John of Aleppo, for Metropolitan Anufri and the suffering people of Ukraine and the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, for the suffering people of Palestine, Israel, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Haiti, and Afghanistan, especially our citizen and soldiers who are in harm's way, for the servants of God, Sue, Elizabeth, Jason, Effie, Kristen, Kaylee, Tanley, Joe, Ava, Nectaria, Catherine, Michael, Bahalabi, John, Rebecca, John, Elizabeth, and Gerald, Matushka, Theodora, Charlene, Jonna, Terry, Lazarus, Samantha, Bridget, Mary Ellen, Natalie, Evan, Tony, Ita, John, Joseph, Birakit, Hannah, Jean, Catherine, the mitered archpriest, Daniel and Matush Gavira, for Lazarus, Catherine, Sue, Daniel, Robin, and Larry, for our missionaries, Jesse and Juanita, for our seminary families, the priest Kirill, Matushka, Olivia, the priest Seraphim and Matushka, Elena, the reader Nathan and Rebecca and their families, for those celebrating this week, David and Jennifer, Ioana, Dorothy, David, Douglas, Sean, Natalia, Betty Ann, George, and George Paul, and for the pardon and remission of their sins. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for those who bring offerings and do good works in this holy and all venerable temple, for those who labor and those who sing, and for all the people here present who await thy great and rich mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Thou art a merciful God, and lovest mankind, and unto thee do we send up glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages.
light we may ascribe glory unto thee, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. desires and pleasures of the flesh is worthy to approach or draw near to serve thee, O King of glory, for to minister to thee is great and fearful even to the heavenly powers. Nevertheless, through thine unspeakable and boundless love to mankind, thou dost become man without change or alteration, and dost become our high priest, and as master of all dost commit to us the ministry of this liturgical and blood sacrifice. For thou alone, Lord our God, were the store of those in heaven and on earth, who are born of the form of the cherubim, who are Lord of the seraphim, the king of Israel, and Lord our holy is rest in the saints. Therefore I entreat thee, who on our good and ready for the sin of Look down and listen, look down upon me, thy sinful and profitable servant. Cleanse my soul and my heart from evil conscience, and by the power of thy Holy Spirit enable me to behold with the grace of the priest of the temple for this my holy table of thy holy and most pure body and precious blood. For I draw near to thee and bow in my neck, I have allured thee, do not turn thy face away from me, nor cast me out from among thy children. But make me thy sinful and unworthy servant, worthy to offer these gifts to thee. For thou thy suffer, and that offers and is offered that accepts and is distributed with Christ our God. And unto thee we send up glory together with thy Father, thy beginning, thy all holy, but in thy kingdom spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of the ages.
Dallas, Art, Principal Boss, Premier Pop in North America, and Santa, His Eminence, the Most Reverend Marsh, Arts, Fix of Philadelphia, East of Pennsylvania, and the Lord God of the Seven Kingdoms, always down to ever not two ages of ages. Thank you. 
Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other, and all our life unto Christ our God. To Tell of all thy wonders at all times. 
time, O Master of all, Lord of heaven and of earth and of all things both visible and invisible, who sits upon the throne of glory and beholds the depths, without beginning, invisible, incomprehensible, indescribable, changeless, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the great God and Savior, our hope, who is the image of thy goodness, the seal of thy very likeness, revealing thee the Father and himself, the living word, the true God, the wisdom before the ages, the life the sanctification, the power, the true life through the Holy Spirit was revealed, the spirit of truth, the gift of sonship, the pledge of future inheritance, the first fruits of eternal good things, the life-giving power, the fountain of sanctification through whom every creature of reason and understanding worships thee and sends up to thee an unceasing hymn of glory. For all things are thy servants. Thou art praised by angels, archangels, thrones, dominions, principalities, authorities, powers. The many I cherubim round about thee stand the seraphim, one with six wings, the other with six wings. With two they cover their faces, with the two they cover their feet, and with two they fly, crying to one another with unceasing voices and never silent songs of glory. Singing the triumphant hymn, shouting, proclaiming, and saying, upholding all things by the word of his power, thought it not robbery to be equal to thee, the God and Father, though he was God before the ages, yet he appeared on earth and lived among men, and becoming incarnate of a holy virgin, he emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being likened to the body of our lowliness, that he might liken us to the image of his glory. For since by man sin entered into the world and by sin death, so it pleased thine only begotten Son who was in the bosom of thee, the God and Father, who was born of a woman, the holy Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, who was born under the law, to condemn sin in his flesh, so that those who were dead in Adam might be made alive in thy Christ himself. He lived in this world and gave us commandments of salvation, and releasing us from the delusions of idolatry, he brought us to the knowledge of thee, the true God and Father, obtaining us for himself as his own people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and having cleansed us with water and sanctified us by the Holy Spirit, he gave himself as a ransom to death in which we were held captive, sold under sin, and descending through the cross into hell, that he might fill all things with himself, he loosed the pangs of death. And when he had risen on the third day, having made for all flesh a path to the resurrection from the dead, since it was not possible for the author of life to be held by corruption, he became the first fruits of those who fall asleep, the firstborn of the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence over all. Ascending into heaven, he sat down at the right hand of thy majesty on high, and he will come to render to every man according to his works. And as memorials of his saving passion, he has left us these things which he has set forth according to his command. For when he was about to go forth to his voluntary and ever memorable and life-giving death, in the night which he gave himself up for the life of the world, he took bread in his holy and most pure hands. 
And when he had shown it to thee, the God and Father, and had given thanks and blessed it, and hallowed it, and broken it, he gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take heed, this is my body, which is broken for you, for the remission of sins. And likewise, he took the cup of the fruit of the vine, and having mingled it, given thanks, and having blessed it, and hallowed it. He gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Oh. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim my death and confess my resurrection. Therefore, we also ask for the memory of the sacred passion and life giving cross as three day burial, resurrection from the dead, his ascension into heaven, and sitting at the right hand of thee, the God and Father and his glorious and awesome second coming. Just you. Thine own, of thine own, we offer unto thee on behalf of all and for precious body of our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Blessed Master of the Holy Cup. And this cup to be truly the precious blood of our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Bless both, Master. Shed for the life of the world. Amen. 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 May the Lord God remember your diaconate in his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. And unite to one another, all of us who partake of the one bread and cup, unto the communion of the one Holy Spirit. And that grant, and grant that none of us may partake of the holy body and blood of thy Christ for judgment or for condemnation. Instead, may we find mercy and grace with all the saints who through the ages have been well pleasing to thee. Ancestors, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, teachers, and every righteous spirit made perfect in faith. Especially with our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary.
ever, Lord, this country and all its authorities. Grant them a secure and lasting peace. Speak good things into their hearts concerning thy church and thy people, that we and their tranquility may live a common, peaceful life in godliness and sanctity. Remember, Lord, every principality and authority of brothers who serve in the government and our forces. Preserve the good and thy goodness. Make the evil to be good by the goodness. Remember, Lord, the people here present, also those who are absent for good reason. Have mercy on them and on us according to the multitude of thy mercies. Fill their treasuries with every good thing. Preserve their marriages in peace and harmony. Raise the infants, guide the young, support the aged, encourage the faint hearted, gather together those who are dispersed. Lead back those who are in error and join us in the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. Free those who are vexed by unclean spirits. Sail with those who sail, travel with those who travel by land and by air. Defend the widows, protect the orphans, free the captives, heal the sick. Remember, O God, those who are in courts and mines in exile, in harsh labor, those in any kind of affliction, necessity, or distress. Remember, Lord our God, all those who entreat thy great loving kindness, those who love us and those who hate us, those who have asked us to pray for them, and worthy though we be. And remember all thy people, Lord our God, pour out thy rich mercies upon all of them, granting them all their petitions that are for their salvation. And do thou thyself, O God, remember all those whom we have not remembered through ignorance, forgetfulness, or because of the multitude of names, since thou knowest the name and age of each, even from his mother's womb. For thou art the helper of the helpless, the hope of the hopeless, the savior of the bestorm, the haven of the voyager, the physician of the sick, be all things to all men, O thou who knowest each man his request, his home, and his need. Deliver this city, O Lord, in every city and countryside, from famine, plague, earthquake, flood, fire, the sword, foreign invasion, and civil war. Among the first, remember, O Lord, our Metropolitan Tikhon and our Archbishop Mark. Grant them to thy holy churches in peace, safety, honor, health, and length of days. Grant thee to divide the word of thy truth. stand about thy holy altar be put to shame. Visit us with thy loving kindness, O Lord. Manifest thyself to us in thy rich compassions. Grant us seasonable and healthful weather. Send gentle showers upon the earth so that it may bear fruit. Bless the crown of the year with thy goodness. Make the schisms of the churches to cease. Pacify the ragings of the nations. Quickly destroy the uprisings of heresies by the power of thy Holy Spirit. Receive us all into thy kingdom showing us to be sons of the light and sons of the day. Grant us thy peace and thy love, O Lord our God, for thou hast given all things to us. And grant that with one mouth and one heart we may glorify and praise thine all honorable and majestic name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of each of And may the mercies of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, Thank you. 
transgressions that is asked of the Lord. Right is the Lord. All things that are good and profitable for our souls and peace for the world that is asked of the Lord. Right is the Lord. That we may complete the remaining time of our life in peace and repentance that is asked of the Lord. Before the dread judgment seat of Christ, let us ask. Grant it, O Lord. Having asked for the unity of the faith and the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. Holy 
Christ is the partner of communion, worthy priest Stephen, for the mystery of my sins, and the life of the last of the world. I believe in the Lord, and I confess that thou art true Christ, the Son of the Lord, the King of the world, the Savior of the Lord. Glory to the Lord.
in the fear of God and was great and
glorify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Peace in the body of Christ, Jesus the fountain of And he heard me and delivered me from all my fears.
I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Oh my God. 
sake of the divine, holy, most pure, and mortal, heavenly, life-giving and dread mysteries of Christ, let us worthily give thanks unto the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. the Venerable Zachariah, the ascetic of the Kiev Caves, and the martyr Stephen and Peter of Kazan, whose memories we also keep this day, and of all the saints that have shone forth in this North American land, and of the holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, have mercy on us and save us, for as much as he is good, and he loves mankind. Archbishop of Washington, Metropolitan of all America and Canada, His Eminence, the Most Reverend Mark, Archbishop of Philadelphia and Eastern Pennsylvania, the President of the United States and the Civil Authority, the faithful of His Holy Temple and all Orthodox Christians, preserve the Lord for many. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to you forever. We have several people who are celebrating anniversaries or birthdays this week, and we want to recognize them. Um, David and Jennifer Knox are celebrating their anniversary on the 30th, so many years to David and Jennifer. Uh, I, a little birdie told me that today is Eldana's birthday, amongst many others. So, Eldana, happy birthday to you. And for parents who haven't filled out the uh, 
parish directory form or your uh, birthdays for your children, I'm the one that gets flack when you don't put those things in. So make sure that you, because uh, your kids come up at communion, you don't have my birthday in the bulletin. So uh, make sure that uh, you uh, get that information in. It will spare me an embarrassing moment at the chalice. Um, also, um, for birthdays this week, Ioana Boca is celebrating uh, her birthday on the 24th. Uh, Dottie Fetitz is celebrating on the Feast of Annunciation. What a blessing. Have your birthday on the Feast of Annunciation on the 25th. Uh, DJ Polish uh, uh, celebrates on the 26th. Doug Kane on the 27th. Sean Cameron on the 27th. Natalia Seawall uh, celebrates on the 28th. Betty Ann Slifka is celebrating on the 29th. And George Priestley celebrates on the 30th. So let's remain standing and sing many years to all that are celebrating. Grant, O Lord, a peaceful, prosperous life, the furtherance of all good things. Unto his beatitude, our metropolitan Tikhon, his eminence, our Archbishop Mark, for the servants of God, David and Jennifer, for the servants of God, Eldana, Ioana, Dorothy, David, Douglas, Sean, Natalia, Betty Ann, and George. For all who are here, especially those who are visiting with us today, preserve them, O Lord, for many, many blessed ye. Resurrection uh, Holy Pascha. Um, I just want to acknowledge and say, Manny, it's good to have you back in church uh, after Amen. your long Amen. illness and recovery. Uh, glory to God uh, to have you uh, back here worshiping with us, receiving of the holy mysteries. Uh, we'll continue to pray for you and for all of those uh, we've been asked to pray for. And God loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. All right. Uh, Amen. All right. Um, uh, a reminder about the upcoming services and events for this week. Um, following the dismissal, we will have a 40th day memorial uh, for Joe, uh, Joseph Mo Mazurik. Um, I can't believe it's already been 40 days since his passing. So we'll have that memorial here um, uh, following the post-communion prayers. 
as a reminder, uh, as we dismiss at the end of the liturgy, that there are prayers that will be uh, read uh, by the uh, readers, and it's important for us to try and keep uh, a sense of decorum still in the church uh, as we are exiting the church, and those prayers are being read for our benefit uh, so we can give thanksgiving to God uh, for the gift of his precious body uh, and his blood. A reminder that this afternoon, the men's club uh, is having their meeting uh, at 7 p.m. Uh, this week is a full week, uh, liturgically once again. Uh, tomorrow evening, we have a Vesperal Liturgy for the Feast of the Annunciation, uh, the uh, Incarnation in the Womb of the Virgin Mary, the Annunciation uh, to her and the fleshment of Jesus in her womb, uh, the Feast of Annunciation. So that will be at uh, 6.30, and there will be a Lenten potluck following that. And according to the uh, fasting rules of our church, uh, that is a day on which fish is prescribed uh, or allowed to be served. So uh, enjoy your fish um, that evening. Um, the nut roll baking will happen on Tuesday. This is, of course, a uh, sort of a sweeping parish event. Many people get involved with it. If anyone is interested in helping with it, please see um, uh, a member of the Altar Guild or uh, the members of our Food Fest Committee, because they're all basically the same people anyway. Um, uh, we have uh, this uh, Tuesday evening, uh, Lenten uh, Compline at 6.30, and then Adult Education at 7 p.m. Uh, the flyer for that was on the back side of the Synodicon of Orthodoxy. The first talk is going to be on uh, the Canon of St. Andrew. It's fresh in our minds, having just celebrated it. And then we'll have another opportunity, one last opportunity, uh, to, to serve the, uh, this, this year uh, the Canon of St. Andrew, and that will be in the fifth week of Holy Lent. So I hope that you will come uh, and participate in those uh, uh, opportunities for additional education. We will have for sanctified liturgy on Wednesday evening at 6.30. Uh, and then there's a special blessing. Uh, the Sitka icon of the Mother of God is visiting our area. It will be at Holy Apostles Orthodox Church. This is a miracle working icon and one of the treasures of the Orthodox Church in America. And I like to tell the story that when it came around when I was seven or eight years old, um, uh, this is the way that we did it back in the day, is we had visitors come to our house, Archbishop Gregory and Father Innocent Frinsco of both blessed memory. And so we got kicked out of our rooms and we had to sleep in the living room, but we slept in the living room with the icon of the, the Sitka icon of the Mother of God. They told us we were her guardians, but really what they were doing was trying to soften the blow that we got kicked out of our rooms. And so this icon is, again, not only a, a major part of our church, but many of us have a special affinity for it uh, as well. And I hope that um, your veneration of this icon will be for your, your benefit as well. Um, we'll have, uh, instead of Lenten Vespers on Friday, uh, we're going to have Compline. I've updated uh, the schedule on the Friday evenings of Lent. Uh, we're going to have Compline at 6.30. And on the other Fridays, besides this one, will also be an opportunity for confession. Um, but um, I have a parish council meeting uh, that evening. And then you'll see the rest of the information as it's listed uh, in the bulletin. Please make sure that you look at your bulletin for the other uh, events and activities that will be happening uh, throughout this week and throughout this uh, coming month. And also tomorrow, uh, when I send out the email, I'm hoping to send out the email, I'm going to let you know about three opportunities. Uh, and we're going to sort of do them together to support people in our church who are going on trips this summer. Um, Zoe Bernack, uh, Tressa Sarai uh, are both going on Crossroad uh, this summer, and we want to support them in their participation in Crossroad. And John Romain is going to be doing Project Mexico uh, and going down and helping uh, build homes in Mexico. And so uh, we uh, want to make sure that we support them uh, in, their, in their ministry and the work that they're doing. So we'll have an opportunity to support them uh, in the coming weeks. Please make sure that you uh, keep your eye out for that and let's support them and give them our love uh, and our financial support. So God bless you all. We welcome our visitors who are with us today. Please fill out one of the cards that are in your pew and deposit it in the box in the back of the church. And come to fellowship hour. That's out. As you go out the door, you go to the left. Our fellowship hall is located over there. We hope that you'll come and stay with us. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory be forever. forever.